Any other questions? Uh, what's your approach on uh, meat eating pets? You know, pets. Pets, they eat meat well. Thank you guys for being here. It's a great question. It's about meat eating pets. Roy, you want to go first? So I've been talking about this a lot recently with my brother. My brother's just rescued a snake from somebody who no longer wanted the snake. And obviously for snakes, you basically need to feed them like frozen rats or mice or that kind of thing. And my brother's another one, he's like essentially vegan. He only eats vegan, but he wouldn't yet call himself a vegan because he's very new to it. Um, but um, it's a hard one. Pets are, or other companion animals is the sort of appropriate term for them now, uh, I guess. Um, it's really tough. So my dog sat there is mostly vegan. Um, so the things that go into pet food, for example, um, are actually really horrible. Um, so your, your average sort of cheap standard dog or cat food has ground up animals in it. So things like cows and chickens and pigs and that kind of thing. But it's the bit of the animals that would never actually be eaten. So it's ground up heads, brains, anuses, tails, all the kind of bits of animals that never get put in things otherwise. Yeah. Um, no illnesses or tails in the um, There's so there's all things that wouldn't ordinarily get put into like human food. There's all the kind of waste stuff that you don't know what they want to eat. But then it's also like the ear tags. So like the, the plastic bits that go in cows' ears. They don't really take those out when they grow up cows. They just put them right in there as well. This is why about 20% of dogs and 25% of cats or every other way around end up dying cancer. Because the things that we're eating feeding them are so bad. It's actually it's, so people will say then, so if you've got a, if you've got a dog and you're feeding them ground up anuses and tails, they're like, oh, that's fine, that's a natural diet, even though cats, for instance, would never eat a cow, because try setting your cat out on the cow and see how that goes. Um, but then you try and feed a dog or a cat a plant-based diet, and they're like, well, that's so unnatural, you can't possibly do that to your dog or cat, because they're just going to die, they're not going to get the nutrients you need, you need, even though you supplement all of the plant-based food with dogs and cats with all the supplements they need to be healthy. So actually, the longest ever lived a dog was a vegan dog, and it was owned by a uh, quite famous vegan activist. And that dog lived for like, I don't know, almost 30 years, pretty much. Entirely plant-based. And um, cats slightly harder, because cats are more obligate carnivores than dogs which are omnivores. But they're still now vegan cat food. Snakes, I'm not quite sure what to do with. The thing that I think is that there's, there's a lot of situations where there is a large grey area in veganism. So veganism isn't actually about absolutism, even though as vegans we want to be absolutists and we want to say, well, you should be vegan absolutely. But actually what veganism means is really difficult. So I think it means being kind to everything that currently exists, as far as we possibly can, and as far as within our means. Um, but for example, like the COVID vaccine was tested on animals. I have the COVID vaccine, but it's, is it technically vegan to have it? I really don't know. Um, and it's one of those things where there is a big grey area and it's, it's hard to say exactly what we should do in every situation. The best, the best rule that I can give you is one, be educated scientifically and with dogs and cats, try and feed them vegan food. But my dog is mostly vegan because he doesn't really like the vegan food so we're mixing it with like animal based food and trying to get him to, in that direction. But you can't just immediately switch them because because he just won't eat it. And so it's really, it is a really tough one. Um, but I don't know if that into that complex topic. Yeah, it's a really complex topic. It's a great question. And I, I wouldn't have anything to add to that. No, again, great answer. Other than, I think what always strikes me as being so poignant when we talk about things like this is the fact that pets don't just happen to be. Everything that we're talking about is human created, human made. Include, I don't even want to call it an issue because you can't call it chest or an issue. It's one of the things that they like. But, but we created that. We created pet dogs, pet animals, as you say. I don't you know there's an uh, argument around when, but 25, 30,000 years ago, we had the first domesticated wolves and all the dogs, including dogs like Chester, remarkably evolved from a wolf originally. But at some point back in the day, man decided to make wolves companion animals and we now have French bulldogs and everything else. Um, so I, I guess everything that Rory said as Chester. Anything to add Chester. <laughs> um, the, uh, the key thing I think is that we kind of owe it to it. We created a situation where we have millions upon millions of not just pets but stray animals, pets and dogs as well. And we kind of we put them in a situation so I feel like it's a really tough one. Like, 
you said, oh, it's a complex issue, but there's no easy fix. Unless there were something no more cats or dogs, we'd have to feed them something. So it, 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 for that very reason, it's so complex. It's like a complete contradiction as we stand here as vegans, and they have a rescue dog as well. And if she's not on a vegan diet, she can't be. But there are animals that are on a vegan diet. That's not their natural diet. So it's a great question. It's really one that ultimately has no answer. There is an interesting, uh, an interesting argument that maybe in a perfectly vegan world we'd no longer actually have companion animals like dogs and cats because, because as you say, like it's, it's impossible to make, or like snakes, it's impossible to make them all vegan all the time, maybe. Maybe it's possible. But also, is the actual relationship that I have with Chester here an ethical relationship? So Chester seems to enjoy it. He's the chillest animal in the world. Uh, um, is it actually ethical to have pets? Is it ethical to have ownership of another life form? Is it ethical to, um, I don't know, keep them in their houses? They can only go out to the toilet when we say they can go out to the toilet. They can only eat when we say they can eat. They can only go on a walk when we say they go on a walk. And so even though at Chester, I think, has a lovely life, again, it comes back to the animal experience. I can never know what it's like to be Chester. I can never know what his experience might is like. But I know that he can only do the things that he wants to do when we say that he can do them. And so that is fundamentally a vegan issue. Like, is it, is it actually vegan? I really don't know. It's one of those situations of the, it's just impossible to know what the right thing to do is. But that doesn't mean we can, can't try our best. And it doesn't mean that when we go to the supermarket, we don't pick the best. We don't say that, like, it's worth saving. 